Hola, hola, Claudine and I am here, and this is what we've been waiting for. This is what I've been waiting for. Monster High's first Playline doll in over four years. Fans are all riled up. But did some of them take it too far? From fat shaming, misgendering, and bullying artists, this is quite possibly the most controversial Monster High launch ever. And lucky for you, I have the infamous dolls here in hand to dig into all the deadly details. Before we get started, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, turn on notifications, and hit subscribe so you never miss the tea on the toys you love. Now, let's dive in. As some of you may know, the new Monster High dolls originally leaked on July 10th by one of of Mattel's senior designers. I talk about that more in my last video, so click the link in the description to check that out so you're all caught up. Fans were furious at first. I don't know how to feel. Honestly, they are just not hitting the same. Crying emoji. Ew. No thoughts. Disappointment. Yikes. Needless to say, people hated these designs for the ghouls. But lucky for Mattel, the fandom pulled an entire 360 on August 7th when one fan got their hands on the new Coffin Bean playset. For context, the Coffin Bean playset was randomly made available on Amazon.ca for $50. It turns out this was put up in error and many fans shared that their order ended up getting canceled. However, Amazon gave an additional $20 credit because as it turns out, Amazon wasn't meant to make these available until early October. Talk about an early release. User Jaylene Epps shared photos of the finalized reboot prototypes from the Coffin Bean box and this basically broke the grim internet. Wow, this is perfect. Obsessed with Frankie's face. Wait, wait, they ate! It's giving old Monster High face but with a softer look. Finally something I'm so excited for and brought back something that's so special to me. These are much better than I ever anticipated. Well done Mattel. Okay but I gotta ask what do you think of the leaks of the dolls on the coffin bean? So what does the end result actually look like? Only a day later that was unexpectedly unveiled. That's right only one day later at caddy 13 noir on Instagram found Draculaura from Toy Tales Cambridge in Ontario Canada. This is where things started getting controversial. Some fans loved it. I actually love her. The shoes count fabulous. As a short fat kid who always loved Draculaura, heart eye emojis, puppy dog eye emoji. The curvy body is amazing. Then there were fans who were skeptical. The hair doesn't look that good of quality. Sad face emoji. 38 Canada dollars is comparable to Rainbow High and Shadow High. Better come with a stand. Nice, but not worth $38. If you want to find out what type of hair the dolls have, if they include a doll stand and what clothing they can fit, I discuss that in a little bit, so keep on watching. After that, things got polarizing. In the description of Caddy 13 Noir's post, they write, I love this new chubby MH body, to which one user responded, chubby? More like realistic. Another responded, I hate the caption so much. It's a normal body. And one rebuttal, no, upper part is tiny and not proportional. And they argued back, she still isn't chubby. And another chimed in, yeah, there were people calling her plus sized. No, I'm plus sized. This is just a normal human body. If the doll was plus sized, she would have bigger arms, stomach, etc. No, but some people were calling her obese, skull emoji. Let's pause. The doll in question is this Draculaura who has a wider hip width than older Monster High dolls about the size of a Rainbow High doll and the upper torso of a Monster High Ever After High hybrid. What do you think of the body type? Do you feel like it's positive representation? Comment down below. Some fans were very open with their thoughts and this was only the beginning of the Monster High fandom war. Draculaura isn't in plus size. Am I the only one who doesn't like how they made them fat? Their original bodies were so cute and not anymore. This obviously led to many angry fans sticking up for the body type, not these comments trying to justify body shaming a piece of plastic. I love that they're making a new body for each doll. I feel like that's what the original Monster High was lacking, was different heights and body types. I'm glad we finally got these here. A lot of you guys are letting your true colors show, and it's nothing like the message Monster High sends. A plethora of fans began sharing on their stories their outrage for people body shaming the new Draculaura, like at MH Updates 2022, who shares, if you hate slash dislike it, fine. You can voice your opinion, but why go and attack people who like it or make overly rude comments? There's a line to voicing an opinion respectfully and voicing one disrespectfully. I think this statement echoes what I believe, which is that in order for us as humans to even progress or resolve conflict, we need to express our genuine thoughts and opinions in a way that's respectful and considerate 
under it. And in order to do that, we need to have a space that's safe enough to do so. We can be open to hearing how we may have hurt someone with our words or perpetuated hatred, either intentionally or not, and also share how someone's belief is hurtful or harmful to us in a way that isn't accusatory or insulting. Obviously, this is a controversial topic within itself, so bring on the Twitter threads claiming I'm endorsing or enabling some belief, which, for clarity, I'm not Gorge, but I can't say I'm not a narcissist aroused by the thought of being a modern day Marie Antoinette. Bring on the guillotine, Henny. Me? Attention seeking? Never. Anyways, all that's to say is I want to practice what I preach, and that means sharing my own thoughts to resolve conflict, and I think it's important to try and understand other people's perspectives, absorb them, and then find ways we can work together towards equality, inclusivity, and progression. With that being said, let's dive back into some more hateful comments. The Monster High core line will feature five characters, Claudine Wolf, Frankie Stein, Cleo Denial, Draculaura, and Laguna. The Laguna doll has not yet been made available. We were only able to get Claudine, Frankie, and Cleo for this video from a seller on eBay, but stores like Target, Walmart, and Amazon are expected to have them on October 1st. Some stores in Canada have been putting out shipments, but NextGen shares that some of the stores that have put them out have since pulled them from shelves after realizing they're street dated. The core dolls retail at $24.99. It seems each doll is shipped to stores individually in a case of four. The case even reads, stop, do not put on shelf before October 1st. I've provided the UPC codes and target DPCI numbers for your convenience. Let me know if you find them. Just to get it out of the way, no, the dolls do not include a doll stand, brush, or diary. I repeat, there is no doll stand, brush, or diary. Honestly, the brush I could live without, but I hope they include doll stands in the future. Each doll comes in minimalistic trapezoid style packaging, which some fans have compared to the Barbie Extra line. Many fans express they dislike the new packaging because it's not quote unquote goth enough. And from my understanding, the use of coffins was removed to be considerate of people who have suffered through tragedy during school shootings and to depict teenagers in coffins would be insensitive, which if that's the case is understandable. I can't confirm for sure whether this is the reason, but as we know, Mattel is a publicly owned company. So both retailers and shareholders get to determine at large how a product should look. And this could have also played a role into why the packaging is designed differently than we may have expected. Instead, gothic elements are used on the side and back of the box in the form of patterns and prints with each character having individualized symbols that represent them. Because these dolls are from Canada, it's possible this is the international packaging and so there may be a fuller bio in the US release. But for now the bio reads, Fabulous Royal Mummy, Must Have Sarcophagus, and Pyramid Backpack with Pet Tut. Claudine's reads, Colossum Werewolf Human, Must Have Furliminator Brush, and Blue Moon Spookies with Pet Crescent, while Frankie's is Voltageous Franken Monster, whose must-haves are Eye Coffin and Screetza with Pet Wutzy. Notably, Draculaura and Frankie no longer mention Daughter of Dracula or Child of Frankenstein. But who's the daddy? While it's not mentioned on the box, as per the Monster High live-action movie and synopsis for the Monster High animated series, Frankie now uses they-them pronouns and identifies as non-binary. This shift has many fans calling out other fans who use she, her pronouns when referencing Frankie. But if you slip up, don't sweat it too much because apparently not even the official Monster High Twitter page has it down pat just yet. Unlike the original Monster High dolls, daughter or son of was removed entirely from the doll's box. Though similarly to the original Monster High dolls, there's artwork fully depicted on the back of the box and wow, was this a controversial topic. I hate the artwork. I just can't like it. <laughs> emoji, who did they hire for this artwork and box design? Other than how gross the artwork is, I am in love. The art is blasphemy. Why is she holding a cup in every goddamn picture? That last one wasn't necessary, it just tickled me from the inside, so I had to share. Anyways, again, controversial, because then people started getting attacked for attacking the art style. I'm not even gonna share what was said on Twitter, because I actually plan on making a specific video about that topic. Secret plan. Revenge on my mind. But I will share what an icon and legend at LJ Plays had to say about all this. Man, reading all these brutal, tasteless comments judging an artist's illustrations, especially coming from a community that prides themselves on being unique and welcoming everyone to be themselves, it's heartbreaking. Monster High is back and it's putting light on the darkest corners of the doll community. Now, I'd be lying if I said I didn't compare the artworks to Count Chocula and Booberry. But LJ Plays has a point. Monster High has literally always been about 
being a safe and inclusive space. Essentially this utopia where no one has to fear being made fun of or abandoned or neglected or outcasted. I mean, hell, that's why I love Monster High because I've always felt so alone until I found the franchise. The doll community has always struggled with reflecting that, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, back to the ghouls. Both Cleo Denial and Claudine Wolf have polypropylene hair, while Frankie Stein has Saran, with their blue streak being polypropylene. Each doll's hair reaches to about their knee, and the only one that's notably thin is Claudine. Because the bodies are wider, Generation 1 Monster High stands may break when trying to fit them on. However, the stands with more flexible pegs can fit. Gen 1 Monster High male stands are a decent fit. LOL OMG stands seem to be too large, but Rainbow High stands are workable. Each doll includes includes an eye coffin, a pet with some characters keeping the pet's original name, like Claudine's pet Crescent, while Frankie's pet is slightly altered from What's It to Whatsy. So no, sorry to disappoint, but their names are not Dicky and Pusslicious. I can't, I can't even say it and Cleo getting an entirely new pet, Tut. The pets are static, so there's no articulation to them. Additionally, each doll has a backpack that can fit virtually all of their accessories inside, a jacket, and a snack of some sort. The accessories are made similarly to the Cave Club line of dolls and are designed with holes that fit the fingers so that they can properly hold their props. Did you notice that Cleo and Frankie reuse their 2010 Gloom Beach sunglasses? The fashion is made of varying textiles similar to Barbie Extra. Frankie's color scheme uses trans pride color Colors white, blue, and pink. I want to think this was intentional. Frankie's vest is removable from the shirt. Claudine's overalls are detachable from the sweater, and Cleo's dress is all one piece. The bottom of each character's shoes have symbols that tie to their individual characteristics. You can never deny Monster High their shoe game. The details go even further with Frankie's Polaroid fitting inside the camera and the photos referencing Scaris in New York, a callback to the older Monster High lines. Though in comparison to Rainbow High, the materials used are notably cheaper. Each doll has has a unique body type, with Claudine having tufts of fur on her ankles and wrist with claw hands. Cleo Denial has mummy wrap print on her right leg and left arm with thicker thighs than Claudine and Frankie. Frankie is slightly taller than Cleo and Claudine by about a centimeter or two, but still shorter than Nephra Denial of Gen 1. Frankie no longer has neck bolts, and Frankie also has a prosthetic leg with symbols and elements as an added detail. This leg is not removable, and no, the foot does not have articulation. The bodies are still significantly slimmer at the shoulders in comparison to Rainbow High dolls, though the thighs on Cleo may actually be slightly larger than Rainbow High. An impressive detail is each doll has torso articulation under their bust, which is a major win for Monster High fans, giving the dolls a total of 12 points of articulation. The hands on the dolls are larger than before, and the pegs are about three to four times the size, even larger than the Gen 2 Monster High limb pegs. Cleo Denial is deeper in complexion than her previous dolls and seem to have a gold shimmer in her skin tone similar to Nephra Denial's original doll. In comparison to Nephra, Cleo is far more red in undertone while Nephra is more yellow olive. Frankie is now more of a mint green with a blue undertone, making the original Frankie Stein appear more muted. Their skin tone is somewhat between Abby Abominable and OG Frankie. The sculpts are from 2021 as per the back of their head, and we can see that Claudine's face is fuller than before with tufts of fur on her jawline. Frankie's face is wider and more boxy shaped with a new ear mold, and Cleo also has a new ear mold with more of a smile. Each doll has a symbol in the reflex of their eye, like Frankie's being a lightning bolt, Claudine's having a crescent moon, and Cleo having a diamond. Many fans express discomfort with Claudine's new face, as she appears to exist in a whole other doll line, with similar screenings to a Cave Club doll. New to Claudine is a wolf nose and freckles. Comment down below, do you like Claudine's new look? Cleo Denial can no longer fit her Wave 1 jumpsuit, as it's far too small to fit around around her thighs. She can, however, fit many of her older dresses and they Velcro in the back completely. Cleo can fit rainbow high skirts and pants better than Claudine and Frankie, however, it's still loose around the stomach and shoulders. Similarly to Cleo, Frankie can fit most of their older dresses, though things like tights can no longer fit as Frankie is too tall for them. It's also difficult to fit things over the prosthetic leg without them snagging, so be careful. Because of their height, Frankie fits rainbow high sweaters fairly well. Claudine can fit virtually all of her older clothes from the Wave 1 outfit to Gloom Beach. Some of the old shoes fit in an odd way, while some of the shoes are too small for the Gen 3 bodies. But what makes these dolls look somewhat, well, off? It may be a color theory. 
If you're familiar with Pokemon, you may know the observation that the first few generations of Pokemon only use two to three colors, while later generations use four to six. Some argue that the first few generations of Pokemon are far more cohesive than later generations, and perhaps the same could be said for Monster High. The first generation of Monster High dolls use about three muted colors with an accent color, while the newest generation of Monster High uses an array of accent colors and an array of color schemes. This is often done to make something appear more youthful, and since these newer dolls are made for ages four and up, it makes sense why they'd choose to go that route. What do you think about them? Can you support this generation? Are you intrigued or absolutely disgusted? I hope this new era of Monster High gives kids today the representation they deserve with diverse body types and character backgrounds. Us older fans aren't the targeted demographic, but I don't think that means this era is entirely unappealing. It's funny because the more I get older, the less interested I am with perfection and the more desperate I am to get my hands on something that makes me feel like a kid again. Something about these dolls just makes me want to sit down and play with them, and I think it'll be fun to get the coffin bean playset and make some stop motions or something. But I'm hoping they continue to create Skelector dolls for older collectors because I still have a deep appreciation for fashion and glamour that I think these Playline dolls simply aren't intended for. We already know there's a lot more Monster High dolls, so be sure to give this video a thumbs up, turn on notifications, and hit subscribe so you never miss the D on the toys you love. Thanks for watching. See ya!